get that emotion. class we're trying to get some answers here uh who's doing what um it comes down to this jet lawrence has already declared he's racing 250 west a lot of 250 riders and their teams don't declare where they're going so my question for you daniel look jet's an overwhelming favorite sorry if you don't believe it that's the facts do you think riders might run and try to go east it's been done before when you have years where there's a singular favorite sometimes it's like that guy that guy and that guy they could all win it this year, Jet is the standalone. He's three championships straight. I, I, he's the favorite. So the question is, do riders run from him or do they run towards him? And it ends up coming down to the team manager and maybe even some of the sponsors. So I, I think the big questions are going to be the star team and the pro circuit Kawasaki team because they're so stacked with riders and they're the two that are the quietest. So I don't know exactly what they're going to do, but I can tell you this. RJ Hampshire, Cameron McAdoo, and Austin Forkner, I have heard, not confirmed, but I have heard likely West. And Jason, those three guys all beat Jet Lawrence last year in Supercross. RJ got a triple crown win, uh, Foxborough, Forkner won, and then of course McAdoo got a win also. And then Battle Jet, pretty good in Indy. So if you're talking about running from the guy, the three guys who raced him last year and were successful, I'm hearing those three are likely to race him. So not running from him actually running towards him in 2023 oh yeah see i was thinking michael bozeman who it looks like he's gonna race east i thought that might have been a running from jet but you've heard otherwise you've heard it's just pierce brown his teammates flying at the test track for west yeah not confirmed also but i've heard pierce brown is on fire at the moment and bozeman needs a little bit more time had an injury or got banged up a couple weeks ago um and the other one that i have heard uh, it's not confirmed but it's I think it's pretty close. I have heard that Jordan Smith, who also has been in some championship runs, is most likely East. I don't think that's running from Jet Lawrence. It's more based on what's best for him, his riding style, and the team uh, that has been very successful bringing in older riders to be on that team and win titles. They're putting him where they think he would ride the best. So not confirmed, but Jordan Smith on the East more than likely. Yeah, he has primarily been a 250 East rider his whole career. We'll move on to job hunting. We've talked about these guys on every episode of our show so far. Shane McElrath and Joey Savacci still looking for 450 work. Have you heard anything in the shopping line for those two? I have sources, and my sources are not connected very closely to Joey Savacci, so I have nothing there. I, I don't know. I, I Again, I think he's just waiting to see if something opens up, and he'll be ready when the time comes. With Shane McElrath, though, I think it's very, very like very, very close to being official that he'll be with the HEP Suzuki team uh, to be teammates with Ken Roxon and I think Kyle Chisholm. Now, I did reach out to Shane. He said it is not done, but both sides are very happy with the way it's looking. So um, look for that to probably be confirmed this week, maybe even by the time the show comes out. But I, I expect to see the number 12 on a Suzuki this year. Now, Savachi did ride for Monster Kawasaki over the summer last year in Pro Motocross as a fill-in for Adam C. Cerullo. And there's some that are thinking he's waiting in the wings to see if he could fill in for Cien Cerullo again because some pesky reporters have put this rumor out here, Daniel, that Cien Cerullo is struggling. What if he's going to retire? He addressed it on uh, Steve Mathis' podcast on the Racer X Network. Uh, let's get to the audio here from Adam Cien Cerullo on those nasty rumors. We got some fake media news in our sport, too, that you were retiring. <laughs> so that was a little buzz there. I'm sure you heard uh, about yeah. it. I'm sure, I'm sure you heard about it. Uh, yeah, I've been here. I, I heard some things. I'm just like, I what? Um, yeah, it, it's it's that's where we're living, man. That's where we go with our sport now. And we're susceptible <laughs> to the same things that celebrities are not on that level, but and mainstream sports are, and, and you know, that kind of stuff. There's a that's reached our level. It didn't for a long time, but we're here now. You yeah, know? I think. Yeah. And I think I've I've been. I guess quieter than I have been in the past in terms of like social media and interviews and and stuff like that. And, and when you're quiet and you're not controlling the narrative yourself, mm -hmm. you know, it, it leaves you kind of open to, you know, whatever the rumor is flying around. And um, <clears throat> yeah, but no, I'm not retiring. I'm super stoked to be racing. Feel good on the bike, man. And just stoked to be where I'm at right now. And uh, I'm not sure exactly where that came from, but I, I was, uh, I, I kind of laughed it off. Where did it come from, Daniel? 
I think it came from you. I think you said it first. I don't know. <laughs> it was on our show. It was on our first episode. Uh, we bantered back. Look, no one wants to hear Adam Cincerlo no. retiring. That is awesome news. We hope he's healthy because we all know he's capable of winning races and he's a great uh, fan favorite as well. Yeah, I listened to that interview too, and um, it's good for him to, you know, come out and say, I'm not retiring, I'm going to be racing. I love that. Uh, but two things. Number one, uh, Steve Mathis, I think, called himself a celebrity, which I have I have an issue with that. We could, we could revisit that on another date. Uh, but I would say the tone that Adam had in the interview, either he really has gone through a transformation and he's approaching things with a, just a different mentality and just a more, you know, relaxed personality because he's such a fan favorite. He's so engaging and, and, and he came across a little less engaged in that interview so i don't know if that's just a, a mentality shift um or if the rumors we're hearing that things aren't perfect are true so i'm going to take him at his word and he's good he's not retiring that's what i want but at the same time i'm and, and until i see it at anaheim one i'm just i'm gonna i'm gonna keep the option open that's just i think that's as fair as i can be with it real quick we have some rookies coming in we want to touch on them colt nichols christian craig We'll get into the details of that. Also, Justin Cooper is going to race some 450 races. What are you thinking of these three and their road to even get here? And now they're finally here. Well, with Justin Cooper, my question is, is how many? We know he's going to do select rounds on the 450. How many is he going to do? We're going to find out. What's made him special in his career, fast in qualifying, great starter, consistent. How fast can he be in qualifying against the best 450 riders in the world? We'll find out. How good of a starter is he going to be on a 450 against the best riders in the world? We're going to find out. So I think it's going to be a tall order, but it's good to know that he'll be there. But it, right as of now, it's still select rounds, and we don't know which ones. Yeah, when it comes to Christian Craig, it's all about the whoop speed. He absolutely dominated the 250 field in whoops. Can he still do that in the Husqvarna 450? I've heard there's some videos from the Husqvarna test track showing he absolutely can slay whoops on the Husky 450. That'll be interesting. And Nichols. In a tough spot here. It's an audition at the same time as it is his rookie year on a 450. He only has a Supercross contract with Honda at the moment. It's a great one to have to ride for the factory Honda team, but he's got to both perform and learn at the same time. So we'll see how that goes. That's your 30-second board. Those are your hot topics.